All right. Welcome everybody back to the Total Relationship Podcast. I am Kim Kokenauer, the co-host here today with Tyson Ray. I've been working alongside Tyson for the last five years, most recently as his COO. And it is our privilege to come to you today to start really diving into the topic of the total relationship. Today, we're really digging in and saying the real meat of the questions. How do you ask the question behind the question for the client? Because no story is the same. Your role as a financial advisor is to help clients understand what their money is for, no matter how much they have. But each one comes to your table, your office, your website with a different background. And your job is to focus on the people, not the performance and the pie charts. So Tyson, welcome. I'm excited to have you dig into this today. You know, sometimes I feel like I could just sit in a chair and uh, let you go because uh, <laughs> it's like you you know it as well as I do, it seems. I do. Well, for the better part of five years working with you and seeing this actually lived out with our clients and hear you teach other advisors about it, um, I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe in it. And I love being able to share this with you. So one thing I think you have the privilege to do today is speak right to the advisors in the audience and kind of help them kind of start to shift their focus. They're in it for the right reasons. They want to help people. They want to focus on people, but we're going to kind of have to start guiding them to do that. So how do you start shifting the conversation to focus on people and step away from the pie charts and performance? Yeah, and I the the thing about the total relationship that that you've encouraged me to focus on is the fact that we're trying to bridge the gap between the financial advisor that's listening to this, but also the client that may be listening to this. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to try and bring bring some um, application to both. Okay. And so <clears throat> anyway, if you're coming to us and you're new, or you're listening to this for the first time and you're new, you're new to us. Um, we go through we go through a process and the and the and and every and say, I, I hate the language right because like every advisor you know if they are they have a salt, process too oh they have a process <laughs> show me how much money you have and I'll show you where I put it that's the process we're not even right? going to talk about money today uh, with that yes yeah so the uh, we share you know clients will ask and we you know what do they need to bring and it's like hmm. nothing nothing no statements nothing you just need to bring yourself usually your significant other. And we're going to sit down and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And the conversation starts with a card game. Uh, and we learned this from another financial firm. And then we kind of put our spin on it. And we have basically a deck of cards and uh, separated between cards that are kind of goals or the future, like thinking into the future, and then cards that are kind of like worries and concerns. And so start with the start kind of with the goals. And I just explained them like, we're going to play cards. We're going to go back to like, we're five years old, right? We're going to play a game. And I'm going to give you each a set of cards and the cards have words on them. It's not what they mean to me. It's what they mean to you. And I'm going to ask you to look at them. And then I want you to put them in order in front of you with the, the, what hits you the most or what's most important or most timely or, or, or the, or, or kind of the big rock first goes on top. And then mm -hmm. some of the cards may not even matter. Like you can just, you know, set them aside, but put in order if you could prioritize what it is we're going to try and accomplish. And, and, and then we're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I love this because in less than five minutes, uh, a couple, uh, if, if they're playing right, you know, sometimes they'll look over each other's shoulder to kind of see who's doing what, but the, a couple will prioritize these, these goals effectively um, that at, if I had to sit there and kind of talk it to them through it, it would probably take an extra hour of conversation. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, because we're not going to hit them all today, uh, cause you know, people want these things within 20 minutes. And so we got to, ah, you know, can't have a three hour podcast today. Uh, you Kim yes, have sir. made me Tyson, who would like to talk about all of it to get into a box. Yep. I don't like being in and I get we're to talk do great. about three, right. It's going to be great. Okay. <laughs> well, right, and before we, you're going to do great. Right. And I think it's great. We picked some really good ones to kind of get people excited about what this really means. Cause it's kind of the, the heart of where an advisor really sits. Um, and clients are focused on these things too. But before we jump straight into those questions, shocking, I got ahead of myself again. You did. <laughs> I was going to be the, Here we the, go. the subtitle. <laughs> Tyson jumps ahead. Well, each, each client's story is so different. And I know you've talked about this quote before uh, from Dan Sullivan talking about the question behind the question, right? 
And what's the importance of actually putting these questions in front of the clients um, so that it helps you as the advisor learn how to draw out what is their real concern? What is their real question about their future? Um, and why does that matter for the total relationship? Yeah, I, it just goes back to, I think so many advisors are ready to tell and teach. Mm. And all we're going to do is take client, you know, the, what we have found is the questions can be the same. It's flushing out the client's answers that are different. Mm -hmm. And it's try what we're seeking to understand is the feelings behind the answer. Mm -hmm. um, and and having this open dialogue where there's no, it's it's like there's no agenda. I don't know how they're going to put these cards in order. I just know most people have these things as a goal yeah. or have some hot priority in their head. And it just starts becoming all about them. Yeah. Well, and it helps the advisor understand the client's priority list. And it's beneficial for the client to understand the advisor is actually paying attention to all areas of their life. It doesn't start with statements. It doesn't start with account balances. It starts with questions. Well, and I don't think what, what I have seen, what I've watched the, like watched the client's emotions process, what we're doing, um, we are so compartmentalized in this day and age, right? Mm -hmm. So if we talk about a topic or a goal, like they'll land on that, but the but the the part of the total relationship, it's everything. Mm -hmm. And so we're effectively helping them for the maybe the first time ever kind of lay it all out. Yeah. Because goals conflict with each other and timing conflicts with each other and, and resources conflict. And it is and is the other per, is, does my partner want to do it? That that mm -hmm. all these things. Um, create these conflicts. And <clears throat> when you're just talking about one thing, you can kind of wrap your head around it. But again, part of the total relationship is to try and start by getting to understand totally what their situation looks like before you, you know, the, the portfolio is the end. Mm -hmm. The beginning is the, is trying to understand how it all comes together to see what this pick, help them see these puzzle pieces. If we lay them out, paints the picture and, and it's in your head, but you're maybe the only person that's ever seen it. And you probably have never seen it in a way that you actually can apply it. And that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. For so clients. for, so for the listeners, there's a great resource we actually have for you on our website, totalrelationship.com forward slash discovery deck. You can actually go on there and get a free download of these questions. So if you're a visual person and you want to follow along with us, go there and we can get you the free download. And those of you who've actually read the book or um, got the ebook or bought the physical book, this is actually part of the life plan. This is a part of ongoing client relationships where this information gets put into uh, your CRM so you can track and use it. So it's kind of the the high level application of what we're doing with this. So Tyson, you're going to be just so excited. You actually get to jump into it, right? Here we are. Retirement age and income. Get out I don't of my even box. want to tee up more than that. Go for uh, it. <laughs> yes. So one of these cards, uh, and a lot of times it's, it's one of the, it's, it's up there on the list of priorities. Uh, the card on one side says retirement age and income. And there's some questions on the other side to kind of help, um, explain what does that, what, what would that mean to them? Mm -hmm. uh, but when they put that card on top or when that card comes up, I'll ask what are, is, are, you know, which actually is not on the back of the questions on the back of the card to kind of create clarifications. I, I'll ask, are you, have, are you working to an age? I'm going to retire at X or I'm going to slow down at Y. Are you working to an age or are you working to an income level that you can basically build up enough wealth to replace a, 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 an amount of income to maintain your lifestyle? And <clears throat> more often than not, uh, I get an age. I'm going to be done at pick, pick a, you know, I'm going to be done at 65 or I'm going to be done at 62. I'm going to be done at 55. Um then I start asking, then the question after that, because it's a, it's the question after the question I mean, you can just keep going, you know, well, why is that? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you'll get, uh, because my dad died in his, when at 45. So I just want to kill myself, right. Uh, continuing to work and, and, and not be able to have the retirement that they didn't have. Um, 
some people will say they never want to retire. Um, and, and, and I think what people miss is, is they work their whole life with retirement being not working. Well, when you're not working, retirement then is nothing, right? You retire into something and it's helping them figure that out. And sometimes it's helping people realize, are you meant to retire? Or uh, especially the business owners and the entrepreneurs that are out there, like they go nuts or die when they have nothing to do. And so mm -hmm. can we give them permission and yet still accomplish all the goals of the spouses and everything else? But so is it an age or an income? And the reason we bring the income component into it is because a lot for a lot of people, and this this happened recently, uh, where uh, we had a client uh, pilot forced out of the airlines and as a as a federal policy at age 65. And he was like a deer in headlights coming up on this age that he didn't set. Yeah. And the when and the income component of this card was, uh, how am I going to replace my income? And when I started explaining, well, we're going to have, uh, we're going to wait on Social Security, and so we're going to turn your pension on. And that's going to go here, and then you've been bringing in, you know, this dollar amount every month, and the difference between what the pension is and the dollar amount that you've been used to is what we're going to pull from the portfolio. We're going to put that in the bank account on the fifteenth of every month, and we're going to put about a year or two of reserve aside. So we have two years before you have to worry about where the, where it's coming from. And quite frankly, that's our job. And as soon as I solved that income part, so he could still tithe and he can still have the lifestyle that he was used to. And he had enough wealth as I showed him that to make that like solving that, mm -hmm. not having to worry about the dividend of this investment and the interest over here or this piece over here. It's just, no, we're going to collect it in one spot and, and replace that paycheck. Uh, that is part of helping understand is it an age or an income? Then, then why? And then start talking into ways to solve whatever those issues are, or concerns are, so they can look forward to and not worry about not having enough or working too long. Uh, for some people, it's realizing, hey, uh, from an income standpoint, you can retire now. I think some people, especially those that have saved and saved and saved, may work and uh, sacrifice time that they could have been retired. But the joy is, is that, again, you're giving them these cards and then and then asking them open-ended questions to start flushing out the why behind that's important to them and what the emotions and feelings are behind a goal instead of just writing down, retire at 65. You know, it's like, no, really, there's some, there's a story behind, that's their story that's behind mm -hmm. that. And that's what we're really seeking to understand. And then what are they going to be doing? Yeah. Uh, and so that's kind of that one of the cards that we see a lot for because, again, most people work towards retirement is the retirement age and income. Yeah. Well, and I've heard you talk about different opportunities you've had with clients over the years to allow them to dream for themselves and actually think about what they want their life to include. We have a better life as part of our uh, core tenant here at Form Wealth that we're helping our clients live a better life. And it's the best life that they can afford. Everyone has a different retirement. Um, but giving people permission to dream beyond their career, that there is fulfillment and joy in that next career, because that next career is retirement. Um, and helping them be flexible in that and pursue other passions that they might have put on hold uh, through raising kids and finishing their career well, that there is a life beyond it. And I think that's a huge value add for advisors and for clients to have someone who wants to encourage them in that because they're looking for that that opportunity to do more um, to what matters more to them when it's not a financial component. Yep. One of the questions that are also asked when that card comes up is I'll just ask, do you guys, what do you net in your bank account every month? Like, I'm not asking for a budget. I'm just kind of saying net of your paycheck, it goes in the bank account. How much is that? Because that's kind of the, the the amount that they're looking to replace, especially if they're W-2 employees. Um, there's just, again, there are so many different ways to ask the question, but they are telling you where to start. And so again, these cards allow us to prioritize where we start and start having that conversation and flush out the feelings and the why behind these cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Well, All that three of them that we get to talk about on this podcast. <laughs> so I think one's down. <laughs> yes, but we're actually going to, part of what you're actually talking about, we're going to jump into next is the education card. Um, because I think that's a huge component that people often think ceases and they only think about just grandchildren. But what's what's the value in asking a client about education? Well, uh, so 
it's not necessarily about grandchildren. Correct. Um, the again, because every this is agnostic relative to age, so everybody will get the same set of cards. I've had a, I've had sixty five year olds tell their spouse that the spouse didn't know, you know what, I want to go back and finish this degree, or I want to go back to school to do something. And, and that's the certificate, the, right. <laughs> extension Cause program. The, right. Because the card, as I look at it, it's like, no, it doesn't have anything really uh, children or grandchildren or what education would you like to get? Uh, mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people tell me uh, I've taken care of my kids. They're on their own for their grandkids. And I laugh because I, I know in my career that when you get past your first decade or so of retirement and the go-go years and having fun, and then you start entering the the slow go years or the no go years. It's like those grandkids become golden, and by the time they go to college, all of a sudden there is money being set aside for that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, if the education card is coming out in that deck, it'll be it'll be asking um, how what was your education, mm -hmm. right? And how, you know how did oh I I had to, I had to do it on my own or no my parents were helpful and they set money aside and. And, you know, do you, you know, how do you feel about your kids going into debt? How do you feel about your kids having skin in the game? How do you feel about where they're going to go or what they're going to do? Because again, this gets into the family component, especially yeah. uh, for those that have, you know, or you'll find out, um, you know, all my kids are out of college. And then, and then the question is, okay, do any of them have any debts? And do you want to help with any of that if you could? Right. It's just continuing to flush out everything around education instead of just dismissing it because, uh, no, the, you know, my kids are done. OK, well, are, but but are they still paying for it um, mm -hmm. or um, <clears throat> uh, education is also it it doesn't necessarily mean college. Right. It, it, I've had clients go on and get educated the way I would help them frame that uh, in photography or in a skill or a craft that they want to hone in as part of their retirement. And that's part of funding those things. Um, but in the end, yes, there's, there's, you're, it's, it's helping fund kids and grandkids and then, and then celebrating that journey that they go on as they go into college. But I think at, at the end of the day, most people, um, I don't think they'd, they realize that, that we're wired this way, but I, we're all learners right? Mm -hmm. We're always taking in information. And so part of it too, is just, you know, what do you do to educate yourself? And then you can flush out what resources are good or bad or indifferent that they are bringing in to themselves to try and educate themselves, whether it's world affairs or to learn, uh, you know, you can also learn. Um, uh, I flushed out, uh, <clears throat> what do you like to educate yourself on? And one of the clients was like, love World War II. And it's just like, oh, why? And he's like, uh, my, you know, my dad, this is years ago, but he's like, my dad was in D-Day. And all of a sudden he pulls out a, pulls out his hand and he's got his dad's uh, uh, Marine ring from, and it was oh. just like, yeah. Wow. Or back when, back 25 years ago in my career, I've had people that were in World War II. And it's just like, mm -hmm. cancel the rest of my day, right? We're just right. Here. <laughs> yeah. But you wouldn't flush out, you know, why they're interested in these things. Mm -hmm. uh, if all you did was just say, no, education's done. Yeah. Well, and it, it's truly, and there's the, the layer analogy. You have to keep peeling back those layers because that's what actually brings the depth and true understanding of what the client is wired to. It kind of gives a frame of reference. If their parents or grandparents were raised in the depression, if they were laden with medical school debt, or if they wanted to, like they had a grandparent who actually saved for their college. Like there's so many things you can glean uh, that you wouldn't know if you skip over it because they're- yeah, in their sixties. As someone's listening to this, I want to, I want to, I want to change your visual on like peeling back the layers. Like it's peeling back an onion. Oh, this no. is like seeing petals of a rose become yes. undone. In the end, you're seeing something that's just, you're understanding who this person is at a whole nother level because mm -hmm. It starts with them. And again, this is financial services and we're getting into all these, you know, things that, that, that allow to have that total relationship, which is the whole point behind this, that mm -hmm. again, it doesn't take that much more time, but mm -hmm. it adds so much more value. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, my love of gardening and flowers. Oh so yeah. I'm I almost didn't say it because it's like, that was maybe, <laughs> that wasn't really for your benefit though. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did. I'll let you have one win for Kim today. There we go. <laughs> I was going to give you another flower as a reference. I was like, we're just going to keep on what you've got. Yeah, yeah, You're going to yeah. get the win. 
<laughs> All right. And something I know that's near and dear to your heart, Tyson, as an entrepreneur and a business owner is talking about business transition and succession. Yeah. So this one is uh, not for everybody because not everybody owns a business. Um, but when this one shows up again, it often shows up at the top because if they're a business owner, how they transition out of their business uh, can be a significant part and helping people realize that everyone is exiting their business. You're either dying with it or you're consciously ahead of time doing something in that transition. Um, and for the fact that majority of small businesses are family based and there's this de desire or, or de hope to bring in someone from the family to turn uh, to turn that business over to yeah. that that in and of itself is can be a very um, what's the word? Well, it, there's just a lot to it. There's a lot of fear emotionally there's heavy. Yeah, there's the risk of monetizing your future around the the necks of your of your kids. Yeah. Uh, is this what the kids really want? Uh, and and or just selling that business and what is that CEO going to do? Yeah. Um, yeah. And part of again being a student teacher is you know the, the couple of years ago I had gotten a certification in business exit planning just to can to learn how to ask more questions to help dive at the feelings and the heart and the and, and the why behind are they going to be able to make this transition are they better off you know some 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 will flush out do you not want to sell your business do you want to just take enough money out of your business that you wouldn't have to sell it what does that look like mm -hmm. and and part of it is just asking questions to i think an advisor's job is to do nothing but continue to give the client the opportunity to think about different options that that, that might have eluded them as a way of just to kind of in the end, when we when we're making the decision, when the client is opting for this is what they want, it's after that we've kind of thought about all kinds of different possibilities because I think they're making a better educated decision, and we're trying to educate them to make a decision at their level. It's not talking over their head. It's not trying mm -hmm. to be this. It's not trying to uh, tell them this is why you have to do these things, but just sharing what possibilities, what we've seen from other clients, what we think has worked in the past, and let them kind of pick and choose. And a lot of times it's to do what you want to do in life. You have to say no to a lot of other things. And mm -hmm. if we can say no to them on the front end, it makes it much easier to say yes. Yeah. Well, and something I've seen you do in client interactions, especially when there's a couple at the table, we don't do these meetings when there's a couple involved in financial decisions without both people being at the table. To your point is each person brings their own concerns and questions and ideas um, to, to each topic, but when it comes to business succession and transition, there's often the spouse who's not the entrepreneur who has a desire for what that retirement might look like, or their fear around what's going to happen if that does, if they never, if their spouse never retires or they never sell the business, or they're making their child monetize their retirement, or if something suddenly happened and the business owner is deceased, who's there holding the cards? It's a safe place for them to start having that conversation instead of that vulnerability with both of them at the kitchen table, they're doing it in our office. And that beyond just the business owner aspect, I think a lot of advisors deal with the decision maker and then make the decision on the investment and then leave the other party out. Yeah. And we encourage them to come in because I learned after 22 years of being married that I don't speak well for my wife. She speaks fantastic she speaks for, herself, for herself. Right. Yeah. And so helping them realize like, no, we're going to bring them into a meeting and there's going to be questions that are going to be asked that she's or he is going to have answers to, and I'd rather hear their answers. Mm -hmm. um, and it is much better having both of them at the table. And then we found that they feel more comfortable to keep coming because we're not sitting here trying to make them feel dumb or talk about topics Excluded. that aren't interesting to them, yeah. but they have a say in what they want the retirement to look like or how they want to educate their kids uh, or what, what their fears are of a business uh, succession, those types of things. So, yeah. all right. I think we're like long in the tooth because I want to keep going, right? So if I, I want to keep going, we're probably done. Uh, so I was going to cut you off. I'm glad you're getting my feeling all the way here. I've got the feeling. So the biggest thing, Tyson, I, I want you to just kind of leave the listeners with like a takeaway from just kind of stepping into these first three things, like other than make sure you're subscribed so you can hear the other episodes and get the complete discovery deck experience. But what's important for them to take away from today? 
Uh, that there's a different way that an advisor can be working with you than I think you're getting. So that's for you, the client. And for the advisor, I think there are better questions to be asking before you're telling them anything. It's mm, very good. I think it's important for everybody to be humble in this experience so that they can learn and know that there's always room to grow and be a better client and be a better advisor. So make sure that you're subscribed so you know when the next episode comes out and head over to totalrelationship.com forward slash discovery deck so you can grab your free download and follow along with us and make sure you connect with us on LinkedIn and all of those links will be in the show notes for you.